On this episode of Off the Beaten Path, we take a look at an ancient form of martial arts, throw tomatoes at hundreds of people in Pittston, learn about the game of fingers, and Chris looks at some classic cars. Pennsylvania is filled with interesting things. You just need to know where to look. Come with us right now as we go Off the Beaten Path. Welcome everybody to another awesome episode of Off the Beaten Path. This is season number five. Can you imagine that? Season number five already. It was just a few years ago when we were younger when we started the show. Yeah, I was like this big when we first started I doing knew. the show. Very, and very I was small. Thinner. And I, I don't know if you've noticed over the years, Jeff and I are both Italian. We talk with our hands. In fact, you just struck me in the take before this. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Italian culture in this episode. Um, we're also talking about martial arts, so a very ethnic kind of show we have for you. We're going to kick it off with the martial arts. Um, I recently met a man named Carl Long at a dojo opening, and he is the 22nd generational grandmaster of a sword art style called Ishiru Iido. The style of martial art we teach is called Iaido or Iaijitsu. It's a, an old sword style from Japan. It dates back over 500 years to the uh, Warring States period in, in military Japan. In Kenjutsu, you draw the sword and then you'll walk into battle. But the, the specific style we do is that actually about drawing the sword and cutting in a single action. So it's more of a surprise attack or a defensive attack. And so we've had over 21 generations of uh, grandmasters down through the ages in Japan. The last two uh, generation grandmasters and my two teachers had passed away this past year. Uh, the style that we do is called Muso Jikiden Eishinru. Uh, it's the most widely practiced style uh, of swordsmanship in Japan and outside of Japan. The, uh, the style is, is basically based on a, a, uh, a style that was thought of as a young samurai whose father was killed and uh, it was his job at that time to s take revenge on, on his father's killer, but he was a teenager and knew that he couldn't, he couldn't really do that. He didn't have the uh, expertise or ability to do that. So what he did was he developed a system that he could surprise him and attack. And uh, as it turned out, it was the first time that was ever done that way, drawing the sword and cutting it in an action, and he avenged his father's death. So how did the sword style of martial arts Ishinru Iaido end up in the city of Hazleton in the year 2013? Well, keep your arms and legs inside your couch area and let's find out. This is Carl Long. He has a bunch of really important titles in the martial arts worldwide community, and with that comes a lot of responsibility. One of his jobs is to make sure the Ishinru Iido style lives on throughout the world, so he's taught almost everywhere, including Antarctica. But Long's story begins over 9,000 miles away from Japan in Pennsylvania. From the time I was very young, uh, my father came back from Japan and, and encouraged us to, uh, to study a martial art if, if we had the opportunity. And I started studying karate-do uh, here in the area, and actually it was in uh, the Shikshini in Berwick area. Uh, I started studying karate-do with a teacher there, and uh, eventually moved on in my teens and uh, uh, got my black belt in karate-do, and I was looking for more. So I started traveling further and further away from home to, to seek uh, higher level instruction and that led me to Japan. I, in Japan, I, I started studying the sword because the sword is actually the, what's known as the pinnacle of martial arts training. So after you do karate and aikido, uh, most people gravitate toward, the, toward sword technique. And uh, when I met my teacher, the most Im incredible thing about him was he was a very strong man, but at the same time, he was a very humble man. And so he showed me humility. He showed me uh, that there was more to martial arts than just learning how to fight just learning how to defend yourself. It was about becoming a better person. While in Japan, Long trained with two Grand Masters that he respected and cared for. He even did a series of training DVDs with one of them for Black Belt Magazine. I've had the, the, the good fortune of, of being able to uh, train with two of the, the greatest swordsmen in, in modern times. Uh, Miura Takeyuki Hidefuso, who was the 20th generation Grand Master, and uh, Shimabukuro Masayuki, Hidenobu, who was the 21st generation Grandmaster. And uh, for many years since they would always say, you know, 
Carlson, you have to come with me to do the do the DVDs and do the videos because you, you, you I don't speak. He would say I don't speak good good English, but uh, you can translate very well. So, you know, it first became a, a point of just trying to translate for Sensei to the point where, you know, he believed that I could actually not only translate the, the message, but also translate the technique into a Western term. Now a grandmaster himself, Wang is still translating for those who came before him. Each generation, generation leader that's uh, taken over in the last 500 years, it's been their job not only to preserve what's been passed on to them, but also to make it relevant for the, for the time. So, you know, relevant for the time and relevant for the culture. In Japan, they have a, a way of looking at their, their martial art today as, you know, it's, it's a national treasure. It's considered a national treasure in Japan. To try and translate that to new people coming in from the West is sometimes a little difficult. Uh, but there are values, uh, the, the values of the, the ancient uh, Bushi, the warrior, about uh, living life and serving for your community. Uh, the samurai principle are about living for your community, drawing the sword for the, for the sake of others. Uh, we, we try to pass along the idea that we do things for the right reason, not because there's a rule or there's a law, but inside your heart you know that it's for the right reason. You may be intimidated by some of this video and you may think to yourself, I could never do that. But Long says he welcomes beginners and he explains that there's really only four basic techniques used and behind all of this is one universal principle. Immediately versus other martial arts where it takes a little bit of time to, to understand what's happening, it's, it's very simple. Drawing the sword is, and cutting is the same as speaking from your mouth. I can say the sword is about as sharp as one's tongue. Uh, because once something leaves your lips, no matter how sorry you are, it can never be taken back. You can say you're sorry, but you can't take it back. Once the sword leaves the saya, you can't take back what's happened. And, and that is something that everyone in the United States, in Europe, South Central America, everyone understands. They understand that this is the same as this. If you are interested in the Ishinru Iaido style, you don't have to travel to the Far East. You can get world-class training right here in Northeast Pennsylvania. Long has a dojo located in Kingston, and now there's a dojo in Hazleton called the Seishin Budu Dojo. Coming up next on Off the Beaten Path, throw tomatoes at hundreds of people at the Pittston Tomato Festival.